It's interesting when you go away and you come back. You kind of go away and you leave everything where it was and you come back and pretty much everything's where it was. Everything's still there, except you're not. And I know Tiffany just went away too. You go away, you fill up, you allow this beautiful thing called life force, energy, love, God, to fill you back up. And then you come back, and there it all is again. But perhaps there's a different perspective. There's a lyric in this song, Rolling River God. It says, the idea is, my, 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 my desire, my dream, my intention is that when I reach the sunset of my life, that you will notice me to have less edges. That, and the lyric is, you will pick me up and notice that I am just a little smoother in your hand. Now, the your really is God, as though if God were anthropomorphized, but it is the understanding that at the end of my life, at the sunshine of my life, which I'm in the sunshine years of my life, but I'm not at the end of my life, but I'm certainly in the third act of my life. So have have my edges gotten less rough? I think they have. And it's deliberate. I think you can go through your whole life without letting your edges get smoothed out. I think you can go right to the last moment of your life and be just as ornery as you were 20 years ago. But one of the things about this teaching and one of the things about this philosophy that I embraced so early on with Dr. Eric Butterworth was the idea that the truth would set me free. The truth, the spiritual truth, would set me free, free from the life of of struggle, free from the life of comparing myself with other people, free from my need to accomplish so much in life. And that's kind of letting go of all those rough edges, free of the sarcasm, free of the, of the, of the judgment, free of playing games, free of thinking that I have to show up a certain way to get what I want. Those are the edges. And the question is, as we go into this last day of release, are you on track to release those edges, to, to let something wash those edges clean? So, today, the t- title of my talk today is Embracing Our Rough Edges. Um, so, here's my question to you. Do you think you were born with rough edges? Do you think you were born with rough edges? Do you think a child is born with rough edges? If we understand rough edges to mean imperfections. So, can children be born with imperfections? Were you born with an imperfection, perhaps? Do we associate rough edges with imperfections? Well, when I was born, 65 years, almost 66 years ago, when I was born, I was born and put right into an incubator. I was a blue baby. I was very, very thin. It's kind of followed me my whole life. And I had a hole in my heart. And in 1954, a hole in your heart was, he may or may not live. You know, that's what my parents got when I was born. I had a hole in my heart. And because of that, I was seen as defective. Now, I'm not saying people walked around going, oh, defective Jimmy, there he is. No, that's not what I mean. But the family thought of me as, there's the special needs child. There's the, the, that's the one we have to be careful with. We have to really take care of. And my entire childhood was all about me being defective in some way because I was constantly being prodded and taken to doctors and I had to get checked out every six months. And in those days when they did a, um, 
uh, not angiogram, when they did your, what's that called? X-rays and cardiogram. They had to put those suction cups. I don't know, most of you aren't as old as me. These suction cups all over your body with tons of jelly. So you ended up being on this slab with tons of suction cups all over your body with jelly everywhere. And, and it was very archaic. And they'd all sit there and, and you'd watch your heart go and just to see how the hole was doing. So when I ask you, are those your rough edges? Whatever def- defect you think you have, and think about it right now. What defect do you think you might have right now? And word may be t- tripping you up, the word defect. So let me make it simpler. What about yourself do you see as imperfect? Where are your imperfections? Do you see them? It could be your weight, your height. It could be some illness you have, an inability. Maybe you're dyslexic. Maybe you're ACD. You know, what is it? What, maybe you're gay and you don't want to be. Maybe you're straight and you don't want to be. <laughs> I don't know. But what is it? What, what would you look at yourself and say, yeah, I see that as a, and perhaps I see that as a rough edge. I'd like to smooth that out. Well, I'm here to tell you today, you don't have any defects. There is nothing wrong with you in any way, shape, or form. I don't care if you can tell me what they are. I'm going to tell you those are not defects. They're not. And those are not the rough edges that this song is talking about. The rough edges in my life are not things that are wrong with me. I have come to understand that the rough edges in my life are the thoughts I use in my mind that create experiences that can give the illusion of being problems or defects, or things that are wrong with me. But those aren't the rough edges, these things out here. The rough edges are the thoughts. So I want to read you what Ernest Holmes wrote. He said, What we outwardly are and what we are to become depends upon what we are thinking, for this is the way we are using creative power. So What we outwardly are and what we are to become depends on what we're thinking. So if my thinking edges are rough, then my life shows up rough. It's like I said to Reverend Karen, you know, it's the law of attraction. So you have attracted that to you that is within you. Well, that's true with all of us for our entire life. So as I went into this last week of release and I was thinking about what did I want to talk about? Yesterday during our workshop, some things came out of my mouth that I had not planned on saying. Uh, Some ideas came to me that I had not thought out, and so I hadn't planned on sharing them. But when they came through me yesterday, I had one of those humongous ah ahas. I don't know if it showed while I was teaching the class, but there was just a moment when I was talking about consciousness and mind. And in fact, consciousness and mind are not the same thing. Consciousness is the infinite intelligence of the universe, constantly moving, constantly being expanded in the most perfect way. And mind is the tool consciousness uses to communicate. Now, my individual mind is also the tool consciousness uses to communicate. So my rough edges are all the things I put in the way of this infinite consciousness, this infinite love, creativity, passion, success, all the good that there is in life. My mind is the place where it all falls through, just like rolling river God. Little stones so smooth. That consciousness is constantly moving through my mind, trying its damnedest to smooth out the rough edges of my thinking. And I think what's important for all of us as we go into this final day of release to start to give it some help. Help it. Help this rolling river God. Give it access. Give it safe passage. Allow yourself the, the freedom that I heard what was that, Kevin, 35 years ago, Eric Butterworth? You know, the truth will set you free. Well, if this is the truth that's taken me like 66 years to get to, 
it will free me up. It is already freeing my mind. This intelligence, this whatever you want to call it, I'm going to call it love because that feels really good. This unconditional love that is everywhere present as it's constantly trying to move itself through my mind, my individualized expression of me is doing its best to constantly keep rolling and constantly keep smoothing out my edges. It's up to you and it's up to me to actually let it. So there's individuality and there's universality. So individuality is Reverend Karen Oxrider, right? It's Brad Kiefer, it's Adam Lenderman, Kevin Bailey, uh, you know, Tiffany Milne. It is all of us individually. There's my individuality, but the universality, that which is the universal, that's consciousness. Now, I am consciousness, of course, but this consciousness that is constantly evolving and moving is who I am, what I am, only to the degree that I let it. So, Thor, if you would pull up that picture for me, so this is Lake Powell uh, at sunrise. And, and I know you all see it online better than we see it here because it's a little bled out here, but I know that Thor is letting you see it there. It is so easy to be there, and you can't see it in this picture, but way up here is me on a paddle board. I had gone up right when the sun rose, and I just went out into this and just started paddling. Thank God Corrine taught me how to do it, and I was being able to stand on it as opposed to kneeling on it, and I was actually standing. And it was this morning when I knew what I would talk about today, and I was way out there, and the sun was, the ye yellow was in the sky, and, and I was taking a video of the whole thing. You'll see that at some point on Welcome Home. Um, and I stopped. I stopped paddling, and I just stopped. And my thought was, I have never heard this kind of silence. There was just nothing. There was nothing. The water was still, or is it perfect, the perfect water that Corrine loves to water ski in. It was just the mirror of glass. There were a couple birds flying. And the entire world came into focus for me because I suddenly felt myself as not just the little speck on the board with the paddle. I suddenly felt myself literally expand into all of it. And that's why I wanted to bring the picture today to show you because there's just something that happens in those moments that allows you to release your individual self to the universal self. And we don't talk about that a lot here. You know, our ability to release the individual me to the universal me. I think science of mind has somehow evolved into, can, can sometimes be seen as a philosophy that has evolved into the, here's what I can get by being this. I can use my mind to get this. But the greatest philosophy that Ernest Holmes teaches is the understanding that the individual dropping into the universal is God. That's what that is. So Ernest Holmes says this, the sooner we release our minds from the thought that we have to create, the sooner we shall be able to work in line with spirit. The sooner we release, so that to me that says, I have to release in my mind the thought that I have to create this life for myself. I have to make this happen. I have to make this church successful. I have to, I, 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 I. I had my Uncle Al once, uh, my Aunt Jerry, who just passed right before I left, and I celebrate her today. <clears throat> um, my Uncle Al, when I was an actor, I was, I was on a break from 42nd Street, and I'd come home, and you know, whenever I came home, you know, it was like Jimmy's home, and everybody comes, and we all sit, and I tell them all my, I regaled them with my stories of being a star on the road. And my Uncle Al was just sitting there, listening. He hadn't said anything, because it was actually just Al, me, the only guys there, and all my aunts and cousins, all the girls. And they're hearing my stories and everything, and Al stood up and he went, can I make a, a little suggestion here? He said, 
I have just counted, you said the word I about 200 times. And I was like, yeah. He goes, you might want to drop that. And then he walked out of the room. Well, we've laughed about that forever. And, but I think about it now. I was putting this talk together and I was like, oh my God. The sooner we release our minds from the thought that we have to create. Now, I even have a chair in my office that says back to me. <laughs> and I do, I like that chair. And my students bought it for me. Because, you know, you do have to sometimes say back to me when you're in a room full of minds that all want to talk. That's what that means. Plus, now I understand it to be back to me, the mental equivalent. Back to the truth. But this idea of the I and then the universal, that's really what that picture was all about for me. Because standing there on that paddleboard, there was no I. There was just the I am. There was just the fullness of allness. And I just stood there and, and I was paying attention to the fact that standing without paddling was giving me some balance issues. And I thought, well, I feel so one with everything, but if I fall in the water, I'll probably feel individual again if I drop my whole self into this water. So I started paddling again, but as I paddled, I suddenly got the understanding. I went, wait, wait, wait. I can take all of this and start paddling. I don't have to drop all of this to go live my life. I don't have to get this gorgeous aha moment and then drive eight hours back to Studio City and just go back to my life. And we're back. And now here's life again. I want all of this to be who I am at all times. That's why when I get to that line, you know, I pray that it, at the end of my life, you will pick me up and notice. I get so emotional when I sing that line and it just gets stuck in my throat. Um, and I get why that is. Because there is something in me that desires, that thirsts for understanding this at all times. Not just when I'm spending a week on Lake Powell, but that I take all of the grandeur of that, all of the beauty of that. I take all of my rough edges embrace them and say, this is who we are. And then I just allow those rough edges to be washed clean and to be smoothed out by the truth of what's coming through me. So Ernest Holmes says, um, oh no, it's not Ernest Holmes, it's, it's, it's Rick Hansen. So I'm also reading this book called Buddha's Brain, uh, which is something we're going to be studying in the advanced class. Um, so, we talk about allowing our rough edges to be smoothed out by spirit. But you know what? How powerful is spirit? That's a really big question. So if this is spirit, if this is the allness, how powerful is that? I mean, just think about it. Can you even... I was looking at a, a video. Someone sent me a video. It was spectacular from the Hubble. Is it the Hubble space, space shuttle? But the Hubble telescope um, that had looked in and seen a blotch of, uh, actually it was Laura Wagner. A, they wanted to see what they could find in this piece of black in the sky. And you know, their first response, well, the first thing the board said, really with everything up in the sky, you want us to commit to a month of putting the telescope, which costs thousands and thousands and thousands, probably millions of dollars, right there in the middle of blackness, just to see what the blackness looks like. Well, a month later when they were done and they looked at all of the what had come forth, it was billions and billions of galaxies that they never knew existed. This, this understanding that there's just no end to it. Billions, billions, can you comprehend that number? Billions of galaxies that we never even knew. We already know the billions we know. So when we say spirit, and when we say oneness, and when we say the power of this immense energized field, our minds can't comprehend that. They really cannot. However, when you're standing on Lake Powell on a paddleboard and you stop and you hear that silence, you don't have to know it intellectually because your body and your heart and your soul feel it emotionally. And there is a, a literal, well, Eric Bork will say that's the wrong use of literal, but there is an explosion of the heart, because my heart did not explode literally, but there is an explosion of self that happens. So Rick Hansen in Buddha's Brain writes this. He says, a single raindrop 
doesn't have much effect. But if you have enough raindrops and enough time, you can carve a Grand Canyon. So, my question to you is this. A single raindrop doesn't have much effect, but if you have enough raindrops and enough time, you can carve a Grand Canyon. Do you see yourself as the single raindrop? Or do you see yourself as the immensity of raindrops that literally could carve out the Grand Canyon? I think it's time for us to release our infinite selves into this, perhaps, plane of individuality. And I think it's possible. I think it's not only possible, I think it is important that we start to tap into who we truly are and become the, the time, the process, and the energy necessary to carve out the Grand Canyon. There's my life. I'd love my life to be the Grand Canyon. I would love all of my thoughts that I think to carve out the most beautiful landscape that I could then call my life. Rough around the edges? No problem. We saw tons of rough edges in those mountains. We saw tons. There was one piece of structure that we loved every year, three years now. I've loved it. When we got back this year, the top had fallen off and it was laying on the ground. Was that imperfect? Was that a mistake? Was that a defect in that particular structure? No. It was just the way it unfolded. So, are you willing to be not just a raindrop? Are you willing to be the wellspring from which all rain flows? Because that's who you are. That's who I am. Ernest Holmes says this, It is necessary that we release all thoughts as well as things that clutter up our lives. So happy to hear that Reverend Karen's cleaning up the clutter in her garage, did you say? Yeah. So when I read that, it's necessary that we release all thoughts as well as things that clutter up our lives. So my question to you is, what rough edges do you have cluttering up your mind? What rough edges are causing the universal river of life, I said rival, river of life, to come flowing through your mind because it's who you are? How can you help it along? Take out that little chisel and get rid of that one edge. Up oh, judgment. Let's, 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 let, you know, I can declutter you completely. Judgment, you can go. So that's the question I want to leave you with today. What rough edges are cluttering up the truth of you. Because here's who I know you to be. I know you to be this picture. I know you to be this magnificent sky. And that's just the beginning, by the way. What happened after this, it just kept getting more beautiful and more beautiful. This is you at the beginning of your sunrise at the beginning of you taking back your mind, at the beginning of you saying, I am not an individual drop of rain. I am in the entire wellspring of of, of liquid as it pours from this universal presence. This is you starting today to release who you truly are. You are every thought that's ever been thought. You are every galaxy that has yet to be discovered. You are every sunrise, every sunset that has ever happened on any planet or any galaxy anywhere. You are all of that. You are all that. I am that. I am. Not I am that I am, Popeye. I am that. I am. That's what we come here on Sunday to talk about. That's what I come here on Sunday to remember. And then, once we are through with today's service, your job is to pick your paddle back up and start moving. Just move back into it. I thought it was interesting. I was moving towards this little cove of rocks, and I realized that I hadn't really practiced turning much. (laughs) And as I got towards the rocks, I was like, well... Probably if I go really fast, I'll turn in time, but I had not really paid attention because I would not have turned in time. So all I did was stuck the paddle in the water. I'd already stuck it in the water, and literally the thing 
because I wouldn't move, because I stood perfectly still, it just turned. And I was like, oh. So metaphorically speaking, if I am willing to put myself firmly in the center of my truth, then my life can turn in any direction I choose. So today, I invite you, along with Karen's challenge, to ask yourself, what is mine to release? What can I let go of in order to give rolling river God that much more access to who I am? Because who you are is that river of love, of truth, of creativity. You are bigger than anything that could possibly be on your plate right now. You are bigger than any event, any any political party. You are bigger than any pandemic. You are bigger than anything you could ever possibly experience. Because what you are experiencing is coming from the way you are using your mind. Today, you are not just a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Namaste.